I want to ask you about what we've seen in Mariupol. The scenes there are, are horrific. The international conventions make it very clear you don't target civilians, you don't target people, and going after a hospital where there's pregnant women could be a war crime. In your opinion, what we're seeing already, is that a war crime, what the Russian army is doing? Uh, I think it is a war crime. It, it, it's very clear, and Russia is denying it. But uh, we have seen such uh, horrible pictures also in the recent history. Vukova, remember Sarajevo, and the same denying and the same propaganda going on. But I think that we, we shouldn't tolerate this. We, we, we have to do much more than we are doing now. And when you say we have to do much more, I know there's a big conversation that's going to happen here today on the energy front and the sanctions, perhaps, on the Russian energy sector. This is the only thing that's making money for Russia at this point. Should there be something that looks like a full ban on Russian imports of oil and gas? Actually, we are uh, speaking about this, this discussion on the table. And it's not a question if this will happen. The question is when. Our position is as soon as possible. As soon as possible, we have to implement all imports from Russia, coal, gas, uh, oil. And uh, we all know that we will suffer for a period. But we have to do it as quickly as possible. We have to prepare for this situation. Europe is strong enough to, well, to stabilize the, the issue. Russia is not in the position to blackmail us on long term. So you say cut it out. Even if there's an economic price to pay, some economies say maybe a recession, what you say is that the situation in Ukraine merits to cut it off immediately. I agree, but also we have to be aware that we are already paying the, the price because the, the prices for the natural gas are skyrocketing. And, you know, this money is going to Gazprom and uh, actually we are buying the shells for Russians and they're shelling the Mariupol. This is the, the unconvenient truth. So it's blood money, that's what you're saying? It's, yeah, of, of, of course, but uh, the situation is that Europe uh, uh, have been waiting for too long for this period. We are not prepared enough. Partially we, we are, thanks God. The stocks of the natural ga gas in uh, in, in uh, in, on, on the territory of the European Union is uh, much higher than Russia wanted to be mm -hmm. because they, they decrease, you know, the supply slowly during last month preparing for the war. It was clear sign that something will happen. It uh, was not at a time, unfortunately. But still, winter is over and the main problem regarding the import of the natural gas from Russia is how to prepare for next winter. But it's, it's enough time for the resources the European Union has, uh, uh, has in its uh, arsenal. We can do it you on easy, but we can do it. And, and President Jansa, what do you say to countries like Germany that say, oh, but we can't, or Viktor Orban in Hungary, who says, I'm against it because it will be painful economically. Are they wrong? Are they, are they not seeing the situation for, for, for what it is? This is a very brutal war in Ukraine that's not a fight of equals. As I said, Slovenia is not in much different situation than Germany or Hungary or Slovakia or, or Bulgar so Bulgaria. Uh, no one can do it alone. All together we can do it. And, and President, I want to ask you about yesterday you had a big discussion about Ukraine and its future in the European Union. They had asked for a fast-tracked application. That was not in the language, but you say again that they belong in the European Union. Your message for Ukrainians who today wanted to see something clear on paper, what is it? Should they be disappointed or is there a future for them in the EU? Uh, well, there, there, there were two issues uh, uh, on, on supporting the Ukrainian uh, struggle, supporting the Ukrainian independence, sovereignty, territorial integrity, helping Ukrainians in humanitarian aid, in taking refugees, in technical aid, also military aid. Uh, the message is very strong. So there are no, no, no country uh, anyhow uh, uh, being against. But on the uh, not European perspective, because this is euphemism, on, <laughs> on the perspective becoming uh, member of the European Union, member of the integration, part of the not European family, they, they, they belong to the European family already, they are European country, but EU family, family 
there are differences. There are differences between large majority of us uh, who uh, advocated that uh, we have to do it as soon as possible because the situation has changed, the world has changed, and strong political message is needed. Yes, and this is political declaration, it's not formal declaration. And some of our colleagues, unfortunately, sadly, they still stick with the procedures uh, going on, going on, as there is no uh, storm in the waters. And uh, of course, and, and President, just a very final question. Yesterday, President Zelensky said the problem here fundamentally is that Russia wants Ukraine to be Russia. Is this the problem when Vladimir Putin threatens uh, Ukraine, but also maybe even other countries in Eastern Europe? Is it because he wants to go back to something that looks like the Soviet Union? Is, is that the goal here, in your opinion? Actually, he is on this path uh, with a high speed. So it's not on what he, he <coughs> wants to do in the future. Actually, he is doing this. So he is doing this, and Baltics, he, <coughs> that's, that's yes. a concern for you. Yes, your there country. Is, there is no limits, you know, in uh, such a so strategy. Putin has no limits. Such a strate strategy, we have to be aware. He will, he will take as uh, he will go as far as possible. So, and if he's taking Ukraine. Ukraine is the fourth richest country according to natural resources. This means much more than just a territory and, uh, well, several tens of million people. And we have to be aware. And uh, the most important thing is that we have to ask Mr. Putin, look, uh, Vladimir, you have been president for more than 20 years. Uh, you are president of a very rich country. But still, after all this, uh, your uh, <clears throat> presidentship, the average salary in Russia is still 600 euros. Why haven't you created a country which is more attractive for Ukrainians than the European Union? You know, you had, you had all chances. Why, why? And, and now you're sending tanks to invade them. So this is not, uh, this is not 19th century anymore. Think, think, think about it. And I think, I'm, I'm pretty sure that what we have been <coughs> looking in Ukraine for the last 15 days, Ukraine will fight and the strategic goal of Putin to take all Ukraine, to change the government, to, 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 to change the country will not happen. This will not happen. At one point he will be prepared to negotiate and then it will be also again on the West to stay firm, not to lift all sanctions because he's preparing and to negotiate.